Noon, amen po. Ako po ay isang pribilehiyo na at aking pong ipakilala ang ating pong speaker. Nung nabalitaan po namin na nandito siya sa Pilipinas, alam ko magpapahinga supposed to be, no? Pastor Joey, no? Pero talagang nung siya po ay kinontak po namin, ay hindi po siya nag-atubili na mag-speak po dito sa home church. Ang ating pong speaker, napaka masasabi kong very mysterious man. Kasi sa mga pangalan pa lang, eh, no? Very religious. Dito na homegrown, di ba? Amen po ba? Biro mo dito. Nakapag-produce ang church. Sabi nga ng isang speaker na narinig ko, ang success daw ng church is not about the seating capacity, but the capacity to bring people out and send missionaries outside. And I pray to God na ang faith Fundamental Baptist Church ay ganyan pong capacity natin na hindi lang si Pastor Joy, marami pa na dadalhin ng Panginoon outside ng four corners of our church. Ang pa, hindi ko po sasabihin yung tunay niyang pangalan dahil magkaibigan po kami. Pero uh, isa sa mga pangalan niya ay kapangalan ng ating senior pastor. Kaya mysterious eh, no? Nag-aral sa faith. Nag-aral sa BBSI, Bible. Baptist Bible, di ba? Faith, Baptist Bible. Nag-aral pa after that sa Messiah. No? So, puro lahat mga religious. At nag-asawa ng isang santos. Ibang-iba. Si Pastor Joy po ay naging kaibigan ko. Malapit sa akin dahil siya po ay naging sudyante ko sa seminary. So, ibig sabihin, matanda na po talaga ako. Two years po siya doon sa seminary and I praise the Lord na naging blessing siya sa family namin. Nung wala pa ako asawa, naging blessing siya no? sa, sa mga sudyante. Ang isa lang medyo masakit sa teacher dahil after mong matrain, iiwan ka rin. Pero nung 2017, nung nag-aral po ako sa Singapore, doon po muli kami ang nagkaroon ng malapitan na uh, pagkakilala sa Panginoon. So I praise the Lord na ito po ay isang privilege for all of us to listen to the man of God na dinala po doon, isa pong masasabi natin, tent maker. No? So nagpapastor na at nagtatrabaho pa sa bas. Hindi po ma- 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 mad- madali po yan. So I would like to commend this man. And of course, gusto ko pong ipakilala ang kanyang may bahay. Ma'am Ina, please rise up. Yan. Hindi po natin kinakalimutan niya si Ma'am Ina Santos Amedo. So, thank you po. The pulpit is yours, Pastor Joey Amedo. Salamat po, uh, Tatay Jared. Yan. Tatay po ang tawag ko sa kanya. para makabawi. Uh, nagpapasalamat po kami sa Panginoon. Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, there's no place like home. At uh, nagpapasalamat po kami sa Panginoon, kami pong mag-asawa, uh, because we came home for, uh, we came home in the, to the Philippines for three reasons. No? And tatlo pong are uh, The first one is, we took this time to physically rest. No, uh, so tama po yung sinabi ni Tatay Jared, it's not easy, you know, it's hindi po madali to be a tent maker, to be holding a full-time job. But at the same time, uh, you are leading the church. But uh, as far as my perspective is concerned, iisa lang po yun. No? Uh, because um, I, I am also, I, I see myself as a shepherd no, in, in the marketplace. Uh, the second reason we came home is, wala pa po, wala pa po tayo sa point, no? Uh, we took this time to have uh, to spend recreational time with with our families in the last uh, three years. No, uh, I think it was almost three years no? since we last came home, and namis namis po talaga namin yung uh, aming mga uh, mga pamilya, and uh, we really had a good time um, spending uh, spending it with our families and close friends. Uh, the third reason we came home is. Uh, we 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 had our 
kami pong mag we had our renewal of vows. Yeah. Praise and thank the Lord for our successful wedding last April 19. Obviously, uh, gustong gusto po talaga akong pakasalan ulit ng aking uh, may bahay. Ganun po siya gustong maka, makasigurado na kasal po kaming dalawa. Uh, biro lang po. Uh, ang aking pong may bahay ay si uh, uh, Miss Regina Santos. Ayan. Sobrang religious nga po ng aming last name. No? Ako po ay, uh, sasabihin ko na po, lalaglag ko na po yung sarili ko. No? Ang pangalan ko po ay Jose Conrado Santo Domingo Amedo. So, dalawang santos po yung nag, nag-combine. Yan. Nagpipigil pa si Tatay Jared pero okay lang. No? Um, ready na ba yung acting PowerPoint? Okay. Ayan. So, on behalf of Faith Baptist International Fellowship Singapore. Uh, binabati po namin kayong lahat. Uh, sana po makabisita kayo doon. Uh, we will try our best to uh, accommodate everybody and welcome you sa aming pong uh, tahanan, our second home. And uh, I'd, I'd like to show a few pictures yan, ng aming pong, uh, ng ating faith family in Singapore. So yan po ay... Uh, part of our spiritual family no so hindi po tayo uh, dalawang church na no? iisa po tayo and uh, ito po bali normal po kaming mga tao nakikita niyo po sa picture diyan napakasaya po namin uh, faith family in the last three years since the pandemic came uh, ang setup po namin ay we we reconstructed our setup into house uh, house churches okay so we've been doing uh, the same setup in the last three years, and hopefully by June, babalik na po kami uh, to our regular face-to-face Sunday worship celebration. Please pray for us. This coming May 29, we praise and thank the Lord because we will be celebrating our 10 years, uh, 10 year anniversary po. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. He is good. He is great. He is, uh, he is with us. And uh, continue to pray for us as we continue to disciple uh, families no? who will disciple their families in in Singapore. So that's our faith family and konting report lang po before we uh, deep dive into the Word of God. If you have uh, th- your Bibles with you, please open it in the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 16. Again, that's 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we will be reading from verses 1 to 16. Kumari lamang po tayong tumayo for the reading of God's Word. You can just uh, follow, follow with your eyes as I read the Word of God from the New International Version. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 16, the, the Word of God says, The Spirit clearly says that in latter times some will abandon the faith, And follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. Verse 4. For everything God created is is good. And nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and and prayer. If you point these things out to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus, nourished on the truths of the faith and of the good teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. That is why we labor and strive, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, and especially of those who believe. Verse 11, command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, 
but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both your, yourself and your hearers. We praise and thank the Lord for for his word. Before we deep dive into the word of God, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we have only one name that we wanted to exalt and praise today, and that is the name of Jesus Christ, our good and perfect example. And as we study your word, dear God, I pray that you will speak into our hearts in a specific way that will challenge us, dear God, to love your word deeper and let it transform our hearts from the inside and out. Whether we are a seasoned Christian or not, I pray that you will remind us that you have chosen us as your ambassadors to set a godly example to the church and also to the watching world. Change our hearts, dear God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of our uh, short, hopefully, uh, devotion <laughs> sermon for today is a godly example. A godly example. If you are, if you are watching, if you are a fan of NBA, which I think a lot of Filipinos are, no, um, I'm sure you know the three the three persons in the screen. No, sa po ay si uh, Alapag. Na hindi po. Si, siyan po si uh, Michael Jordan and Kobe, Kobe Bryant. No? Go, growing up, no, they were, uh, they were uh, two of my most uh, favorite basketball players. No? They were, you can say that they are probably the most successful basketball players in uh, the National Basketball Association. No? Having won five or six NBA championships is a big thing. Wala pa pong nakagawa niyan uh, in the entire uh, NBA history. Um, but the secret, no, uh, the secret, secret recipe to their success was a man named Phil Jackson. Yeah, si Phil Jackson po ang uh, nagmentor sa kanila uh, to, be, to be the successful basketball players that, uh, that they are, that they were now. And I said that because in our study today, we see Paul acting as a great coach. No? Not, not, to, not to Michael Jordan or uh, Kobe Bryant, but to his son in the faith, Timothy. No? And uh, Timothy, as we probably all know, he was pastoring the church at Ephesus. Uh, Timothy was a young ministry partner that Paul himself discipled during one of his first uh, missionary journeys. And um, the letter that we just read was addressed to Timothy as a young pastor. And it contains a lot of instructions as to how to lead, nurture, build, and uh, manage the church. So if you would read the book of First Timothy, uh, you can just uh, keep in mind that it's, it's actually a set of, it's like a, a manual no, on church management. And yun po ang ang pakain ng sulat ni Apostle Pablo kay, kay Timothy. And Apostle Paul, um, he wrote this letter to Timothy for one big reason because there was, apparently there was one, one group of, um, one group of people inside the church at Ephesus who were spreading wrong, unbiblical teachings and on top of that, they were also involved in sinful practices in the church at Ephesus. And that's the reason why he sent, he sent Timothy to, to Ephesus to address these matters. Uh, Paul knows 
Paul knows the foundation of every healthy growing church is good, sound, and solid theology and value for the Word of God. Which is why it is not an accident that when, when Paul begin the, began the writing the letter to Timothy, he instructed Timothy right off the bat to be on guard for false teachers no? and their false teachings. Okay. Apostle Paul knew that if Timothy allowed these false teachers to infiltrate the church, then the church at Ephesus would start to crumble. And there is no other way to address the matter but to bring Timothy and remind him back to the basics of the Word of God. Because Apostle Paul knew that the Word of God is the foundation of every good and healthy, vibrant church. Without the Word of God as the foundation, churches would, churches would crumble. And I'd like, I'd like for us to start with our big idea for, for this morning. Can we all read, no, para may uh, audience participation po tayo. Let's all read this uh, Together, a church belief system shapes its behavior and gives it a barometer as to how the world perceive, perceive Christ. Again, a church's belief system shapes its behavior and gives it a barometer as to how the world perceive Christ. I'd like to divide our study today into three Sections now to, to expound our main truth for today, and that is the, I'd like to start with the first one: the right, the right belief. In in verses one to three, may kita po natin dyan, uh, There was a warning no, given by the Holy Spirit that during the end times, the church will see more and more people being drawn away by false teachers. And their false teachings. These false teachings and ideologies will be the number one reason a lot of people will leave the church during the end times. Hindi po uh, sabi sabi lang yan. Yan po ay katotohanan na nanggagaling sa salita ng Panginoon. And speaking of false teachings, no? Apostle Paul here in verses 1 to 3, he started to call out, no? he, he called out, he started to call out this group of false teachers in the church. Uh, who were who were forbidding people no, to to marry and abstain from certain foods. So apparently, itong mga tao na to, uh, they were spreading the news that marriage is a bad thing and certain foods uh, should not be eaten. Okay. And to correct and counter this these people, Paul. Paul made reference to Genesis no? in, in verses 4 to 6. May kita natin dyan. He went back, Paul went back to Genesis where he mentioned how God created both marriage and food as good gifts from God that, that ought to be received with, thanks, with thanksgiving. But you see, the problem was these twisted people, they, do not, they didn't believe such thing. No, and uh, clearly they they didn't have this these people. They didn't have a good foundation. They didn't have a good understanding and foundation of the Torah no? or the Word of God. Or worse, they do not read nor they know the God of Torah at all. Otherwise, they wouldn't teach such things. And you see, the, the last thing, the last thing that Paul wanted Timothy to become was to become one of these bad teachers. And so here comes Paul to the rescue as Timothy's coach. Advising Timothy what to do with the current situation at hand. So in Paul, so Paul in verse 6, he told Timothy that the key, that the key to be a good minister, contrary you know, to being a bad teacher, the key to be a good minister of Jesus Christ is to, is to what? To continue in the truths of faith. Yeah, in verse 4. 
ang sabi ni Apostle Pablo dyan, if you point these things out to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus. Take note of the key word, nourished on the truth of the faith and of the good teaching that you have follow, followed. In other words, the key to, to be a good minister of Jesus Christ is to continue in the truths of faith and good teaching that he has embraced. He was telling Timothy to continue to make the word of God the foundation of his life. And Paul was not, Paul was not the only person who modeled the word of God to Timothy. May kita natin in 2 Timothy um, that was probably the only passage in the Bible that Timothy's um, grandmother and mother was, were mentioned. Um, Timothy's faithful mother and grandmother played a big role in making sure that Timothy knows, that Timothy knew and he lived out the Word of God in his own life. And, and speaking of mothers, I'd like to make a quick segue in recognition of Mother's Day. Uh, I'd like to thank the Lord, uh, praise the Lord for all the mothers here. Uh, ma- makakatayo lang po ang lahat ng nanay dito po sa, uh, sa simbahan. Pwede po ba tayong tumayo? And I'd like to recognize each of you. I know there will be a recognition later, but I'd like to uh, recognize you now. I don't want to miss this moment. All the mothers, please rise. Ayan. Salamat po sa Panginoon sa inyong sa inyong mga buhay. Makaupo na po tayo. We praise and thank the Lord for your life. We salute we salute you for being the ilaw ng tahanan. Ayan. Thank you for never, never getting tired, uh, waking up each day to cook countless meals uh, for us. Uh, pa, sa hindi po sa walang sawang paglilinis ng bahay. Ayan. Uh, sa walang sawang pagsasermon. Ano, joke lang po. I owe I a owe big part of my life um, and my love for the Word of God in the church to my, to my mother, personally, no? Uh, I praise and thank God for her life, uh, for not giving up on me. Uh, nung kami po ay lumipat sa Antipolo back 2000, year 2000, no? Year 2000. Um, you know, as teenagers, kami pong nila ate, we were... Uh, be- before coming magsimba, uh, nakakailang bato ng chinyelas si mama sa amin. Siguro mga limang chinyelas para gisingin kami in order, in order to come to, to church. And surprisingly, no, uh, it worked. And uh, natuto po kami magsimba and uh, minahal namin ng Panginoon uh, because, of, because of her. So mama, thank you. No? But don't do that to me again now. Awkward po yun. So to all the mothers, uh, I pray that your love for the Lord and His Word will continue to abound. Uh, wag, po kayong, um, wag po kayong sumuko no, to pray for your families. Uh, there's a reason kung bakit kayo po ay iulaw ng tahanan. Uh, continue, continue in, your, in prayer uh, because God is with you and God will always come through in your prayers. So, Going back to our passage, you know, what principle can we see here? The principle is this. The Word of God enables a believer to cultivate a Christ-like belief system. You know, if a church's belief system, sabi po nga natin sa ating big idea kanina, if a church's belief system is the one that shapes its behavior, then the key to gaining the right belief system is to look at the Word of God and immerse our lives in the Word of God because there's nothing else that will enable a believer to cultivate a Christ-like belief system but the Word of God, the Word of God alone. And that is why in verses verses 13 to 16, may kita natin dyan, Paul commands Timothy as a pastor, to focus on reading, teaching, preaching the word to the church, and making sure he practices what he preaches as well. Because Apostle Paul knew that this is foundational in building and leading the church for them not to go astray and be led by the false teachers around him. 
Kaya kami pong mga pastors ninyo, uh, hindi po kami magsasawa to preach the Word of God in this pulpit. Whether you like it or not, that's our delight and duty. No? Hindi po kami magsasawa to preach the Word of God. We will always come back to the Word of God as our source of salvation, our source of power to overcome sin, our source of hope, satisfaction, strength, and sustenance in this life and in life eternity. We will continue as a church not to stand by the truth that, listen to this, biblical literacy is very important in a world filled with fake news, superstitions, superficial beliefs, and biblical ideologies and worldly teachings. Sadly, if you ask, if you ask teenagers right now, Christian teenagers, mas manami pa silang alam in social media and computer games than the Word of God. And the Word of God is starting to lose its foothold, no? In the hearts of the young people nowadays. And not, not just young peoples, but even, but even adults, no? Wala pong exempted. Um, so I pray and I pray that we will take hold of the truth of the Word of God every day. Because the Word of God will always be our standard of faith and practice. Amen? Um, yeah, the, 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 reality, the reality nowadays is that people get to decide what's right and wrong simply based on their own taste. Not based on what the Word of God says is right or wrong. We live in a world who gets to choose their own standard of right and wrong. And the problem is, as humans, we don't and we'll, we will not ever do a good job at this. Our judgment and values will always be insufficient and flawed without the Word of God. I'd like to make an example. One of the false belief systems that the church has embraced today has been what we call pragmatism. Pragmatism is the belief is is the belief that goes for what always works. No. It's the belief that goes for what's easier, what's comfortable, what's profitable, what's practical and effective should be what is right and wrong. This is true. And this is what's happening now in the world. Example, no? this coming election. What is your, let me ask a very personal question. No? And you don't have to ask, to answer. What is your ultimate basis for electing a candidate right now? Is it convenience? Is it? peer pressure? Is it competence alone? Where do our Christian values come into play in electing our next president? Now, I'm not, I'm not going to promote a certain candidate. I'm not, I'm not going to do that here. I'm sure most of us have already chosen our, our candidate by this time. But before, before we have a cast our votes, no? whoever the person in your heart is, I won't ask. But I wanted to ask, before you made that decision, did you ever consult God? Did you ever take the time to look at the Word of God, how He chose His leaders based, based on the Word of God? Did you ever pray for, for the person that you're going to vote? Or was it purely done out of practicality? Or was it done out of prudence? I leave that to you and the Lord. I just pray that this coming election, whoever, whoever is going to stand as our next president, no, we, will, we will as a church uh, submit to his leadership. Okay? So second point. So that's right Right belief, let's go to the second one. Right 
behavior. So after, after, after Apostle Paul stressed the importance of God's word as the enabler uh, of a Christian to having a Christ-like character or belief system, Paul went on to emphasize what it looks like, you know, what it looks like to be, to be godly, you know? And makita natin yan in verses, in verses 11 to, in 11 to 12. The example of pursuing godliness, you know? Paul, in verses 11 to 12, he went on to profile what it means to model godly character or godly behavior. He went on to charge Timothy to model godliness to the church even at his young age. And Timothy at, this, at, this, at that time, he was about around 40 years old, which was considered young at that time in their culture. And makikita natin dito, there is great wisdom in what Paul was teaching Timothy here. As far as Paul is concerned, spiritual maturity does not equal to old age. Spiritual maturity is modeling Christ-like character regardless of our age. That's why he said, don't let anyone look down on you, Timothy, because you are young. But set an example for the believers. As children of God and as leaders called by the Lord, we should be godly examples regardless of our age to our homes, to each other as brothers and sisters in Christ, to our pre-believing colleagues no, in, in our workplaces, and to this watching world. So let me ask this question right now. Are we setting, are we be, uh, being a good example in speech, in our, in our speech life? And mind you, hindi lang, po, hindi lang po restricted yung speech life natin when we talk and converse to one another. It also covers our speech in social media. And I think that it plays a big part. You know? Are we setting a good example in how we talk in social media, in our way of life, in our conduct, in our love for each other? Are we being good examples of love? When people look at our lives, do we see do they see us as selfless, as selfless people? Our faith, no? When, when storms come in our lives, do we let our faith be overcome by our fears or vice, or, or vice, vice versa? Impurity, no? As far as what Paul is saying here, Paul is actually setting the standard of godliness to Timothy. He was telling Timothy, Timothy, you are the pastor of that church now. And I want you to be a good example. I want you to be a good example to the church. And here's what, what being a good example looks like. This is the standard, no? This is, this is the standard. And alam nyo, mga kapatid, when I was doing this study, I realized, grabe pala yung, ano, grabe pala yung pressure kay Timothy because the same, the, the, the standard that Paul is teaching here is, is not found in the world. No? The standard that Paul is teaching, the standard of godliness that Paul is teaching to Timothy here is the same standard that applies to us pastors. Kami pong mga pastors, um, we want to be accountable to you as to how we live our lives. We don't want to be known as the smart, smart pastors, the cool, rich, charismatic, funny pastors, you know, because that's not, that is not the standard of godliness. The standard of godliness is what Paul was describing here. Be a good example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. So pray for us, no? Kami pong mga pastor, pray for us as we pray for you because we will also hold you accountable to the standard, to this standard. Alam niyo mga kapatid, napakaganda tignan nung example ng accountability 
ni Apostle Paul kay Timothy. Yung, yung tandem nila in, 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 in New Testament, it, it gives us a very good picture of accountability. And may kita natin dito yung principle that godliness and accountability, they actually go hand in hand. You won't ever grow, let me tell you this right now, you won't ever grow as a Christian alone. You need somebody, you need a spiritual buddy, you no, know, or mentor, or friend to grow, to grow with you. As Christians, we're not called to be alone in our in our Christian walk. Because godliness and accountability go hand in hand. So let's not waste it, no? Let's not waste it. Let's value, let's value our accountability partners right now. I'm sure most of us here are, have our own small groups, tama po ba? And within our small groups, we have our uh, accountability partners. Okay? And I want you to remember this. Next time that you have your own accountability session, say this to your partner. I will hold you accountable over my spiritual growth. No? Check on me. Hayaan nyo siyang pakailaman ka no? in your spiritual life. Okay lang na maging pakailimero or pakailimera in our own spiritual walk in Christ. Ask your accountability partner to be intentional in checking your lifestyle, in correcting you, in correcting you, in encouraging you, in growing with you, in leading you to be closer to the Lord. And church, this is empowering. No? As we all grow in Christ together, this is empowering. I, I personally believe a church with deep value for accountability is a healthy is a healthy church is a growing church is a living church is an active church don't forget godliness and accountability they all go hand in hand and i pray that we will cherish our accountability partners in in christ so the next thing, the next thing that Paul uh, emphasized here is in this passage, not just the example of pursuing godliness, but also the eternal reward, the eternal reward of pursuing godliness. In verses 7 to 10, and 11 to 12, it's very clear that Paul said, train yourself to be godly. So may kita natin dito, the pursuit of godliness actually starts with, with a choice. You know? And to give you just a quick word study, the word godliness comes from the English word godlikeness. It means to have the character and attitude of God. And brothers and sisters in Christ, pursuing godliness is a worthy goal. After telling Timothy how the Word of God produces Christ-likeness in a believer's life, Paul reminded Timothy of his responsibility to pursue Christ-likeness and make it the goal of his life. Paul knows that there's no true fulfillment in this life apart from being in Christ and pursuing a life of Christ-like, Christ-likeness. One author said, Only godliness is the path to true fulfillment eternal life and joy. The ways of the world, its wealth, its fame, its vices, its beauty, its achievements and popularity offer only temporary satisfaction and leads, and leads nowhere. So mga kapatid sa Panginoon, let's pray to the Lord that He will continue to give us strength to pursue Christ-likeness in our walk with our accountability partners because there is there is an eternal reward in pursuing godliness 
and that reward is sure in our life here, in our life after, after earth. Um, I'd like to go back to stress the importance of godliness. There's one, there's one coach in, in the NBA, you know, another coach. His name is Greg Popovich, you know. Um, going back to the importance of accountability and godliness. In an interview, um, he was asked what made the San Antonio Spurs um, one of the most successful uh, teams in the NBA. And he said these words. Ang sabi niya, I think you have to have accountability. You know? For us, the thing that works best in building the team is total, brutal between the eyes, honesty. Basically, what, what Coach Greg was saying here, he was trying to establish the culture of accountability and honesty in his, in his team because he knew that this was important. You know? It was important for them to see each other's weaknesses and be, be on the lookout for one another as they continue to pursue their goal to winning the championship. And that's, that, that works similarly in the life of our church. No? Accountability is very important in godliness as we, as we pursue our goal to become mature in, in Christ. So, mga kapatid, let's all stay faithful. No? Don't neglect the gift of accountability. Be intentional with your, with your accountability partners. If you have not been in contact with your accountability for a while now, please contact them. It's important. No? It's vital in our spiritual spiritual growth and i pray that we will not we will not get tired pursuing christ likeness with our accountability partner because there will be a reward after i would, my third point is the right barometer remember our big idea kanina sabi natin a church's belief system shapes its behavior and acts as a barometer as to how the world perceives christ as Paul puts this chapter to a close, Paul encouraged Timothy to give his calling his best effort. Kaya ang sabi niya dyan, Timothy, be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Apostle Paul encouraged Timothy to keep on preaching the word and model godliness to the people around him, especially the church. Because in doing so, There will be spiritual progress on his part. Church, our commitment and passion to spiritual progress takes effort. No? It takes work. It takes effort, initiative for us to grow in, in Christ. If we are passive in our Christian life, if we are neglecting our devotions, our prayer time, our time with our church faith family, our intentionality you know, to, to, to live out and apply the Word of God in our lives, if we are passive about all these things, how do you think, can we, how do we expect to influence others to know Jesus Christ. If we are not passionate about Jesus Christ personally, how do you think can we ever win people to Him? How we live our lives, you know, as Christians, it serves as a barometer for how the, the world around us, even our brothers and sisters in Christ, it serves as a barometer for how they see Jesus Christ at work in, in our lives. Our lives serve as mirrors 
for how the world see Christ. Our behavior, our lifestyle, our pursuit of godliness and good works, they all matter. They all have a purpose. You know? Christianity is not against effort. It's not against good works. It is against earning your way into your salvation. As far as our good works is concerned, they serve a very special purpose you know, for how the world sees Jesus Christ in our lives. They serve as barometers. You know? The way we live our lives serves as mirrors for how the world sees Christ. The church is called to be alive, to be full of integrity and love for Christ. And only when we live in this manner and passionately pursue this call will people see that we are disciples and followers of Jesus Christ. So church, no, let's, let's practice what we preach. Yun lang po yung gusto kong sabihin dito. Without hypocrisy and pretension. Because people around us can easily spot what a fake Christian is. No? Marami na pong hypocrite sa mundo. Huwag na po nating dagdagan. When we say that we are truly a Christian, then let's Let's truly live this out. You know? The world is desperate. They're, it's, the, it's, it's, it's desperate to see people who will genuinely love them in the way, in the way that, in the way how Christ loves a sinner. Let's model what it means to be Christians to this watching world. God is holding us accountable to this. And so let's hold each other accountable as well. And as we do so, no, your faith family in Singapore will be with you in prayers as we, as we pursue our faith goal to reach more and more lost people and lead them to Christ. As, um, as I sat down Karina sa aking lugar, I saw your vision as a church, no, this uh, this coming 2025, FFBC Antipolo, both locally and globally, shall be known as a premier fundamental Bible-believing, spiritually mature, and disciple-making church with an active membership of at least 20 million. 20 million ba, Pastor? Uh, 20,025. You know? And a state-of-the-art sanctuary with 1,000 seating capacity shall have planted a faith, outreach churches, shall have raised and trained workers to do the work of the ministry through faith, school of mission. Praise and thank the Lord. That's a worthy, that's a worthy and noble, noble vision. And we will pray with you as you, as we pursue that goal globally. But it won't start, mga kapatid. We won't, we won't, we won't go, we won't go a long journey without being intentional in our spiritual life. Because our lives, our lives serve as a mirror, as mirrors for how the world perceive, perceive Christ. And mind you, our lives could only be the only Bible that our pre-believing friends can see, you know? I pray that as we continue to live our lives as a church, that when people look at our lives, they will see the love of Christ at work in our faith family. But they will be drawn, no? They will be drawn to how selfless we are, to how devoted we are, to how compassionate we are, to how committed we are in, 
in living a life of integrity. These things, these things attract people to the person of Jesus Christ. Let's all pray, church. Father, you have called us to be your ambassadors. The moment that you have called us into your family, we have accepted the role to be ambassadors of Christ. And to be an ambassador means to be a representative. Someone who will represent your person, your love, your compassion, your values to this watching world who desperately needs transformation. Father, we pray, I personally pray, that you will change us from the inside and out to be good examples, to be living godly examples, not just inside the church, because it's easy, it's easy to put up a facade when we are in the four corners of the church. It's easy to do that. But who we are when we come out, that's, that's something. Who we are when we come out, when we go back to our workplaces, who we are when we find ourselves in the quiet rooms of our lives, who we are in our families, in our group of friends, that's something. How we live our lives. I pray that we will always keep in mind that we are your ambassadors. And we speak on behalf of you to call back these people who are far away from you. Father, use your church to be beacons of light to this unbelieving world. Thank you for giving us a worthy vision to follow that by 2025, we will have a church membership of 20,025 members. This is a daunting vision that we will not be able to accomplish without your help, your enablement. And it starts... It starts by finding ourselves in love time and time again in your word. Because the word of God is our enabler to having a Christ-like character. And having a Christ-like belief system as a church will shape our behavior and will give us will move our hearts to be godly examples in this world, in this dying world. Panginoon, gamitin niyo po kami bilang ehemplo ang iyong simbahan. We know, dear God, that you have no other plan. Wala na po kayong plan B in reaching the world but using your church. So Father, we ask that we will continue to abide in your presence. That we will continue to fall in love deeply every day in your word. That we will be, we will be godly examples of genuine love. Because only when we live a life of love will people see around us that your love is real, that your love is true. And that your love desires for them to come back and have a relationship with you. We pray for all these things, dear God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this faith family. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Maraming salamat po, Pastor.